Hi class, Dr. Lindner. Let's take a look at some of the neurotransmitters. Um, neurotransmitters, their effects could be modified and it can be modified in a variety of ways. The synthesis could be stimulated or inhibited. The release of them can be blocked or enhanced. The removal of them could be stimulated or blocked and the receptor sites can be blocked or activated. So we can manipulate neurotransmitters in a variety of ways with nutraceuticals, with vitamins, with minerals, um, nutraceuticals, herbs. Now this term agonist and antagonist, an agonist is anything that's going to enhance a neurotransmitter's effect, whereas an antagonist is anything that's going to block the action of a neurotransmitter. We're going to look at uh, some different classifications of neurotransmitters. There are small molecule neurotransmitters like acetylcholine, amino acids, biogenics, uh, ATP, nitric oxide, carbon monoxide. Uh, we have small molecule transmitters that we had just mentioned. And you notice that the function is going to be different because their structures are very different, right? Acetylcholine is different than glutamate. It's different than norepinephrine, dopamine, purines. So we're going to talk a little bit about, um, about these. So let's look at some of these neuropeptides like substance P and kephalons, uh, angiotensin. Now when we look at uh, substance P, these are found in sensory neurons. They're found in the spinal cord. Um, and parts of the brain, and they're associated with pain. Substance P enhances your perception of pain. So substance P allows you to feel more pain. So there are things that can be done to block substance P or to burn them out. Uh, things like biofreeze, things like these topical an analgesics, you put something on on your skin and all of a sudden it feels like really, really hot or really, really cold. And then it makes you so aware of it. It enhances the perception of that. And your mast cells are pushing out this substance P. And all of a sudden there's no more substance P left because it, it just flushed it all out. And all of a sudden, 15 minutes later, you're feeling better after putting on the biofreeze because there's no more substance P. It pushed it all out. Um, and kephalons, these inhibit pain impulses by suppressing the release of substance P. So this one is kind of like making you feel it, and this one can inhibit it. And we know that a lot of uh, therapies can inhibit in kephalons. You know, acupuncture can work very well, vibration therapy, hands-on therapy, lots of medications can be used to uh, block substance P. Um, endorphins also inhibit pain by blocking the release of substance P. Again, acupuncture works very, very well with things like that. Um, angiotensin II stimulates thirst, regulates blood pressure in the brain uh, as a hormone, causes vasoconstriction and promotes the release of aldosterone, which is also increases your heart rate and salt and water reabsorption. So the uh, angiotensin II is designed to increase uh, your blood pressure. CCK, it's found in the brain and a small intestine, and it regulates feeding as a stop eating signal. It's also involved in helping to break down fats. We know that when fat hits the stomach and it goes into the duodenum, the duodenum releases CCK and it goes to the gallbladder and tells the gallbladder to release bile and break down the fats. Okay. So just a few, uh, again, substance P enhances our pain perception and encephalons. These are, have a, a pain relieving effect by blocking the release of substance P. And acupuncture may produce a loss of pain sensation because the release of opioid-like substances such as endorphins and dynorphins, okay? And we're always looking for 
uh, drug-free ways of trying to help people in acupuncture uh, has made a lot of strides um, in the last few years. Okay, some of the uh, small molecule neurotransmitters, we're gonna hear a lot about acetylcholine. It's very, very important at the neuromuscular junction. When we get into muscles, we're gonna get quite a bit into the NMJ, the neuromuscular junctions. Glutamate and GABA. Uh, glutamate is excitatory and GABA is inhibitory. Um, I think of glutamate when you get up in the morning, it's the accelerator. It helps you get up out of bed. And then glutamate, uh, the flower has to close, right? This is the opening of the flower. In the evening, this is the closing of the flower. GABA, which is gamma amino butyric acid, GABA is inhibitory. It calms down your brain at night so you can sleep. Glutamate stimulates your brain in the morning so you can get up. GABA calms you down at night. And glutamate really does get converted into GABA, but we need our B vitamins in order to do that, especially B1 and B6 to make those conversions. So if you're B vitamin deficient, you're not going to be able to do this. Now, there are some people that have these imbalances where they're glutamate dominant at night, meaning they can't sleep at night because their brain is wired with information. And then there are people that are GABA dominant in the morning. When they get up, they're constantly hitting the snooze button. Okay. So GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Valium, right? Some people use Valium or Valerian root, which is a GABA agonist, which enhances its inhibitory effect. Some people may use Valium when going on an airplane to relax. So they're a little bit tired and they're sleepy and they're not as anxious. So these neurotransmitters um, are very important. Norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin. Um, norepinephrine is going to regulate your mood, whether you're awakening from a deep sleep. Dopamine is involved in regulating skeletal muscle. And serotonin is also involved in controlling of mood, temperature, regulation, induction of sleep. These are very, very important um, neurotransmitters. Okay, let me just make sure. nor epinephrine and dopamine these are going to be coming from tyrosine okay these come from tyrosine atp these are excitatory in both the central neural system and the peripheral neural system we have certain gases like nitric oxide this is formed from an amino acid called arginine. Now, arginine, when you have this amino acid, uh, arginine, which is very, very important, your body can make this nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is super important because it's responsible for helping to vasodilate blood vessels. That's extremely important. It's a major, major vasodilator. In fact, this is what Viagra is. When gentlemen have erectile dysfunction or ED and they use Viagra, it's nitric oxide. It's vasodilating the blood vessels of the penis to create an erection. But at the same point in time, it's going to vasodilate a lot of other blood vessels so blood pressure can dip. So they have to be very, very careful with that.